Good afternoon, guys. Uh, Ricardo with Fast Tech Performance, and here we are. Uh, we've got this live show going on, um, and we wanted to kind of bring you guys here today, and what we kind of brought to you is actually a Camaro enthusiast and owner himself, okay? What, and Davey here has, has uh, agreed to open up his hood, bring in his car, and talk about the different mods that we have kind of started with and where he's kind of come to. Davey, you've had this car since what, 2011? 2011. 2011. So, I mean, the, the car, 2011, it's convertible. You see, we dropped the top, so it's convertible. Uh, we dropped the top and everything on it, and he's got a bunch of stuff done to this thing, okay? He's gone everywhere from, from mild to wild, uh, and I wanted to kind of bring him in today to show you guys where you can start and where you can go and where it might be a kind of a stopping point or where you just could really kind of have to change things, right, Dave? Because, I mean, there's a certain point, and you know, I'm looking at the supercharger right over here, you know yourself that there's a certain point where it's like, do I do it? Do I don't do it? Sure. So now what we've got going on, David, now, you've, like we said, we, you've had this car since 2011, and it's been a, an awesome car for you, I'm assuming. It's I mean, it's, <laughs> right? It's a, it's a daily driver from what it's I... It's my wife's, actually. Uh, okay. So the, the history on the car is um, I had a Miata, uh -huh. which is funny, but and I bought another one later. <laughs> but uh, my wife was off at lunch with some friends, and um, I had some time to kill, and she was interested in the Camaros when the Transformer movie came gotcha, out. Gotcha, right, right. And uh, I went and surprised her and traded in the Miata for the Camaro, so when she came home from her lunch with her friends, there you go. it was in the garage. So There you go. So that's technically her car, and that's <laughs> something we can kind of touch on, too, between mild and wild. Right. Uh, it's technically her, her car, but we always say it's her car, but it's my toy. There you go. Um, so we, we kind of share it. But she drives it every day. It's got almost 78,000 miles, and um, nice. And it's a daily driver for a, for a mom of two with a <laughs> nearly 700 horsepower at the crank. Uh, there you go. There you go. Well, I mean, like we said, guys, Davey, he's had this car. I mean, he's been a longtime customer of ours. He's he's been around with Camaro Club. He's he's gone to to car shows. He's set the car up to where it's got lights on it. It's got, you know, all these other things that that just the list goes on and on. We were talking about it earlier. The list goes on and on with this car. But let's see, David. Okay, so you you got the car. You took it. You surprised your wife with it. Yeah. Scored some brownie points there, guys. Okay, he did. Yeah. Uh, so he scored some brownie <laughs> points there. Um, so where did you guys start? What was your intention, I guess, in buying the car? Did you guys just buy yeah. the car because you wanted a Camaro? So, so the reason why we had the Miata is because uh -huh. my, my oldest son started driving and I didn't need a family car so much anymore. So we got something fun and my wife wanted a convertible. Mm -hmm. So when I traded that in, it had to be a convertible. Gotcha. Yeah, which is why this is. So it was in, he said it was her car, intended to be her car. And there's one day I'm just Googling things to do, mm -hmm. came across the H-Town Camaro Club, came across lots of posts about modifications, and then just started from, from there. And, and started off, you say mild to wild, started off a little bit timid about what could I do and mm -hmm. should I do. Um, and then we started, like a lot of people do, with the small things and just kind of went up from there. Right. So, so, so what, what were some of the first mods? I know you got some <laughs> lights done to the car. You got yeah. different badges on the car. Yeah. You know, and obviously, I could point out a whole bunch of stuff that he's got on here but but where did you guys start with it i'm assuming yeah. you all started with lights because a lot of people like to start yeah. with lights the first the first few things were uh were the lights we did um that used to be the mail slot light here and, and those those are notoriously <laughs> not very not very durable um, right. so we had the mail slot light um also some things like change the uh the bow tie to the mm -hmm. ss and there's there a go, couple there of options go. there i just thought that one was was cool very very mm -hmm. old school look um it went with the theme of the car yeah yeah, yeah they had gone uh, yeah, which and, and sort of the blacked out uh, look too. So even you know even the cross member there was silver and had that powder coated. The wheels are powder coated black. So we wanted to stick with a black sort yeah. of theme and, and generally the wasn't murdered out um, is the term, right? Yeah. But we went with um, the the at the time it was a JDP uh, Halo uh -huh. um, conversion, uh -huh. um, which came with a, a how-to disc that I was. And this is another thing I was afraid to personally do myself. There was a, a moment in there where you could lose a screw. So Ricardo actually right. did, did that did that work for me. Right. It's it's much like the Dio Dynamics kit. I mean, you know, kind of kind of talking about that. The Dio Dynamics kit does that essentially that same thing, and it goes right back in that that factory LED location is kind of where I'm I'm kind of trying to say. Exactly. But it goes right back in that that spot and has a controller allows you to do a whole bunch of different colors and. Yep. 
you know, gets everything tied in together so that way you're sitting at a car show and hit the, hit the remote and you're good to go, right? Yep, so that, um, we did the tech nostalgia uh, taillights. It's got mm -hmm. the show mode. It's got the yeah. double, like the flashing on the brakes with some settings on there. Yeah. So, yeah, it started mostly with what I would call low consequence things. So lighting mm -hmm. and some, some badging, blacked out the, the Camaro um, word on the side. Yeah, sorts of things. gotcha. And I noticed that, I know it's kind of looking over here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and hit the parking lights on so you guys can see if I can get my camera guy over here. You can kind of see that, you know, he's also got the, the Oracle side markers. Um, he's got the blacked out badges as far as the Camaro letters are concerned. And he's kind of got everything else kind of blacked out. You'll see the wheels. He's got the lug nuts. You know, just kind of looking at the small little, like you said, low consequence things. Like that stuff. You know, like that stuff. Um, you know, the kind of some of the first mods um, that, you know, a lot of guys really kind of do. Um, you know, and, and so where did you guys go from there? Y'all did the lighting. You did some of the badges. And where did you where did you go from there? What was the next step, I guess, in your, your evolution yeah. of this Camaro? So that, the next step, you start to get um, a little more emboldened from talking to people about things that they've done performance wise and other issues mm -hmm. the next step if i remember correctly was uh probably we put on a an aftermarket exhaust at the time it was the uh the solo uh brand okay. exhaust which was great it, it it sounded it sounded great and it it sounded like i expected it mm -hmm. to sound um and did my research on it and read through all of them it was a cat back instead of an axle back that's okay thing. um and that was that was great so that was the first Performance, not performance, <laughs> but the first sort of performance uh, piece that I put on that wasn't yeah. lighting or badging or that sort. It, it was a light modification. Yeah, it was. Mm -hmm. I kind of like to refer it as. I mean, you yeah. have your your lighting, which kind of has its own kind of sure. category per se. Sure. Then it's got light modifications, which you know, are intake, right. exhaust. Well, and the other thing to think about too, if you're thinking about this and you're and you're thinking about what do you want to do next, uh, it was warranty, right? So. Um, if you're going to go, obviously supercharger and things like that, you know, you're, you're, you're going to do away with that. Right. Um, so for me that, that solo exhaust was something that it can be debatable, you know, if it's a warranty issue or not, but it's mm -hmm. not really much of a modification. You right. know, it was, it was, again, it was a low consequence, mm -hmm. uh, type modification that you can do. I, I didn't do it myself, but you could, mm -hmm. you could do it yourself. You know, if you've got, yeah. you get, um, you know, high enough jacks and that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, but um, but it was it was again it was a kind of dipping your toe in the water at that point mm -hmm. maybe you know, the toe was it was polite. a start I'm getting down the ankle with uh, with the cat back <laughs> right it, it it was the start to to the snowball effect right. is what I kind of like to refer to it as right. the snowball effect to where you, you start a little bit you get the lighting you like how it looks you start to do right. some wheels some cosmetic stuff you kind of get that 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 bug in you there then you want more performance and like you said he's talking about the the cat back system that he did from Solo. The good thing about the fifth gen guys, I mean, for some of you guys that, that have these cars and you haven't modified it, maybe you picked one up used. If you haven't modified the, the factory exhaust is all one piece. Well, the solo goes right back into the factory location, which is, you know, like you said, you could do it if you had some set of jacks. Yeah. Do it yourself in a weekend, you, could, you, you know, could. on a Saturday morning, Sunday morning. Really I nice just, and easy to do. I just chose not to, but I, but I could have. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you know what? I mean, but I mean, but there are stuff that you put your hands on this sure. car that you've done yourself. So sure. a, a lot of this stuff, guys, it really kind of it, it's very easy to do. Intake, all that stuff is easy. You got the exhaust system on. You have the way it sounds. You mm -hmm. like the way it sounds. Where did you go from there? So yeah. um, we started after that going to, um, I guess it might have been C5 Fest or one of the other things. We started uh -huh. doing some autocross okay. uh, track, and that's a ton of fun. You know, uh, that's another in high consequence, low consequence. If you want to start racing, autocross is a great place to start racing. Uh, you know, it's a cone course. Yeah. Uh, you, average speed is not very high, but it's so much fun. But especially being a convertible, it's heavier than a standard SS. You get right. some body roll, right. you know. So the next the next step was change to some of the suspension parts. Okay, so so you start you started having a little bit of fun with the car. You, 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 I'm assuming you went to car shows and stuff before that. You know, you, you, you showed it off. You, you had it. You, you made some friends and going to the Camaro Fest, which really kind of happens all the time. You, you go out there, you meet new people, and you, you start to trade. And then you, then all of a sudden you got friends in Florida, you got friends in California, yeah. Kentucky, everywhere. Absolutely. Okay, so then you start making friends and you start getting into it, and then you start autocrossing like you started with. What happened, I guess, when you started? You started to notice some weak points in the car. Yeah, I, I'm right. assuming because yeah. uh, we'll be honest, this car is great stock don't get me wrong but there's always room for improvement there is and and when it was released you know the 2ss was the top of the line right since then was the one le and the z01 mm -hmm. so i'm out there with my big fat heavy convertible competing <laughs> with those guys and you know and then you watch the videos and you get all this body roll and stuff like yeah. that and you see so then you go well 
if I'm going to be competitive or at least fun w with this, and it's still fun, but yeah, um, yeah, changing the suspension parts and and changing some of the um, the, the sway bars and some of the pieces mm -hmm. just kind of keep that yeah. keep that to a minimum, become more controlled, I guess you'd say, than some right. of the wilder sort of turns. You turn mm -hmm. the, you turn the traction control off, it can get kind of crazy. <laughs> get a little crazy there. So so you so did you start off with springs? I know some of you guys are thinking, you know, well, yeah. I'm going to start off just straight autocrossing and get right into it, yeah. and at that point, then you, you really kind of open up a whole nother animal. But I'm assuming, like most people, I know myself included when I first started out, is you start off with a set of springs. You, you take the car, you have fun with it. You know what, let me lower the set in gravity. Let yeah. me get some springs put on there. And like you said, you rolled into sway bars. Yeah. How did that affect the way your times right. were coming out? So, so let me segue for a moment into uh, how do you make these decisions sometimes, right? So you can do your research and you should, mm -hmm. and, and these yeah. guys are great for that but also a quality installer and somebody who knows what they're doing. And, you know, right. so you can go pick some parts, but my recommendation is, 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 is talk to Ricardo and, and, and the fast tech folks, but also find yourself a quality installer. Mm -hmm. um, for me, it was, it was J rod speed shop that, that did all of the important work to the car. Gotcha. Um, you know, not the lighting and whatnot. <laughs> um, and talking, talking to, to them about, um, this is what I want and getting their direction on, right. Well, you want to go with this type of, you know, in this case, you know, sway bars and, and links and, and all yeah. those bits and kind of, and I believe I remember correctly, I worked with him and you to like put together this parts list yeah. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and order all that stuff ahead of yeah. time. And then they, they installed the, um, the, the, right. Got everything that's dialed right. in for you. Right. And then that was pretty good. Uh -huh. Um, but then I still wanted a little more control. So, uh, we went with coilovers. Um, so this particular brand was something that, that Jason, um, wanted to test out. Mm -hmm. on the car so these were sort of an experimental uh set they're okay. still they're still on there um still they're on the car. B, and, B and g um, okay so in the adjustment knobs right here okay and um and what's great about it on the track you can you can literally i mean there's a little knob that says soft mm -hmm. to hard right there and you can change yeah. that and you can you can feel the difference in the car you can feel the difference in the sway okay and all that. so so you went with coilers after the springs after you got a got a, you got a good feel for the springs and the sway bars and how everything acted you decided to go coilovers yeah. Um, now, was there any deciding factor to go in coilovers or are you just, you know, I, I need a stiffer suspension because you're digging into it a little bit more at this point, right? Yeah, a lot of it was experimentation. Uh -huh. So I wanted to be able to, to, to change the stiffness and see what it feels like and go out, you know, go out on the track and make a pass. And yeah, I like this. I don't like that. Um, and truthfully, I'm not even that good. So it's, it's probably <laughs> set up more for people who can can really tell those things. I, I just play with it. Yeah. And, and, and test gotcha, things out. man. Well, I mean, OK, so going back a little bit the car's a daily driver yeah so you got the coilovers now how's the daily drive with the coilers since you can adjust the dampening on them it can't be too bad yeah. can it i mean if you're daily driving the car at this point yeah. it can't be too bad well so here's, here's an interesting thing to learn right so you go out the track you set them to hard right and you're doing your thing and you drive home and it's fine and your wife gets into it <laughs> and she hits you know houston highways and says my god this sounds terrible like, oh yeah okay and you go you give it a couple of clicks off and you can change it well, which cool. is great about it too which is exactly you can have that that sort of that track animal that does its thing and then mm -hmm. you can change it to a more of a comfortable ride you okay know, when, when you're just doing your, your yeah. sunday cruise type stuff gotcha okay so so that, that i kind of digs into the suspension and the light mods and, and at that point that you had all the suspension done i'm assuming you had headers and intake on the car did you have the supercharger at that point yet no so that was okay so in in one fell swoop um, uh -huh. was a supercharger um and and headers and an aftermarket trans cooler because you're going to add heat Right. With this. So right, to bring right. that to bring that bit of cooling mm -hmm. external to the existing um, existing radiator, um, and we did a catch can at that time. So that okay. was that was you know a, a lot of the changes were gra gradual. Even the suspension changes. Yeah, you can kind of tell the supercharger and all. That, I mean, it's it's a whole different story at that point, <laughs> and uh, and it's a completely different animal. It's it, it's, it's fantastic. As a matter of fact, my other car is a CTSV, which is stock, and it's great. Mm -hmm. And I actually sent my my wife a text the other day. It said, "I forget sometimes how fast this car is." Like it's, it's fantastic. That, that's 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 awesome, man. Yeah. So so okay. So kind of backtrack a little bit for some of you that might be joining in. We've talked about lighting. We've talked about light modifications. You know, the the intake, the exhaust systems, and stuff like that. Um, and then we talked a little bit about suspension. Now I know when you're autocrossing, and some of you guys that might be thinking about it too. You have the suspension. You got the sway bars. You got the coilovers. You you got everything you need to to go along with that. Now, how did it break? Because I know when you get some heat in the factory brakes, they kind of kind of tend to fade a little bit. So, yeah. so did you add rotors? Did you change the pads yeah. and stuff like that? Did you right. do any of that? Well, and it's interesting. So the brakes came, the brake up, upgrades came uh, with that autocross in mind, right? So, mm -hmm. you know, fast is great, but you got to be able to stop too, right? right? 
um, and my my want for that was for the autocross mm-hmm. bit. Um, but if you're gonna go to a supercharger and, and all these things, people forget they want to go fast. But if you're gonna go fast, you're gonna have to be able to stop it. Right. And yeah, so yeah, people and they want to save a dime. Um, and my recommendation is if you're gonna do something radical like a supercharger, don't forget the brakes. Right. It's it's super important to 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 add that simultaneous. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Yeah, because, I mean, all those guys, these cars, they make a decent amount of power. They they put a lot of power out, a lot of power down to the ground when you get them kind of really going. But you've got to remember, you've got to stop the car at some point, right? So, I mean, not all of us have that big, long highway like we do here in Texas. I mean, I-10 is just, it's open. Don't get me wrong. Not that I'm saying, hey, go out there and open it up. But you do have to stop eventually, right? So, we all got to get home. Um, So, so you you did all that stuff. You, You got the power you got the suspension, you got the lights, it's a daily driver. What have you guys done since then? I mean, has there been really anything that that just kind of points out to the car that, that you're super happy with? Or has it just been the, you know, the Whipple's been, or the, yeah. the supercharger has been your, your, your go-to? Yeah, I mean, probably the most notable thing is, is, is the, it's not a Whipple, it's a... It's oh, Magnus, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm um, there. The, the, the most notable thing is that, um, you know, I, I've, I've let a few people drive it, um, friends, mm-hmm. and typically, if, if I let somebody drive it, it's somebody that I know uh, can handle it. You know, I've got a coworker that's got a Mustang. Yeah. It's like, okay, he, you know, but to just throw the keys to someone um, is something else to be mindful of, too. Not, not that many people would do that, but the power in it, you know, when you add the supercharger like this, the trash control light, uh, <laughs> sometimes I'll, I'll hit it and get a little sideways, and that light comes on, and it's light saying, like, please help yeah. me, please help me. The supercharger's like, nah, nah, nah. We're yeah, doing, we're not we're doing, doing that right now. So <laughs> it does change that factory drivability a bit. Gotcha. But the thing that's most impactful, yeah, is is that. And, mm-hmm. you know, part of the exhaust, you know, the, the, you can kind of get into it if you like, but the solo exhaust is gone. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was a, It's an automatic, so it came with an L99 and L99, L99 exhaust. Now it's an LS3 exhaust. Okay. Uh, gutted cats. It sounds fantastic. Mm-hmm. So... Uh, truthfully, one of my favorite things is actually to follow behind my wife and kind of hear her like take off. <laughs> that and just the the this power on demand is right. probably the bit that brings us the smile to your face. Yeah. That's that's awesome, man. And like I said, but David's been a long time long time customer. That's a, that's that's come by every time he's got some new idea, wants to try something else. We talked earlier about you know setting up his suspension a long time ago, which you know that at that point was hey, everything was kind of new at that point. It was, around 2012 2013 yeah. that we were setting up your suspension yeah. and all that stuff yeah. so 2011 was not super new but fairly new there were a lot of guys didn't really didn't know a whole lot about it but as we went along we learned a lot more um you know so setting everything up getting everything going that way you you got the car you got it performing the way you want it's a convertible guys like we talked about earlier it's a convertible he takes this thing to the auto cross course it can go back and forth, compete with the coupes, the, you know, the ZL1 guys, like he's talking about. He wanted that extra power, wanted that, put everything to the ground and really get it going. Um, so any anything else, Davey, that, that maybe we didn't cover? I, I see you got the, the SS up front. We've noted that earlier. You got the Oracle side markers. I see you got everything on the back, on the side. You got the dark wheels. Uh, let see, you got the hex vents. Uh, that, that's an old product, too. Some of you guys that have been around in the fifth gen for a long time, you might recognize that. That's been on the car for a long time, but uh, everything else has been pretty fortified. You got everything going for it. Anything else you might be looking to do to it in the future? Uh, for, for this one, no. I mean, it just kind of where we are and, and, and sort of all the little pieces. Um, there, there's very little that I would continue to do to it just because I am pretty happy with mm-hmm. the way it is. Um, the, the, the difficult thing sometimes with it is when you make those modifications, things kind of, things happen. Right. right. And when you make them, especially if you make them yourself, um, you got to be prepared to, to have maintenance on those things. Mm-hmm. Um, I've got, I've got underdoor lighting and, and the sill, the, the door sills have a custom lit up uh-huh. little message in there too. Uh, and those just stop working the other day. So <laughs> it just happens. You know, yeah. when, when you make those modifications, you, you have to maintain that. Um, right. and, and being a daily driver, I probably have neglected a little bit in the last few <laughs> years. Um, but it's just, you're going to get dings. I mean, I can show you, this is, Something from 290 got me there. Something from 290 got me there. 290 is a devil. Yeah. Um, but maintaining those things and, and keeping up with it, that's just something if you're going to make those modifications, yeah. uh, you got to be prepared. Something to kind of keep in mind. To keep, it's, a, it's, mm-hmm. it's an added level of maintenance on top of the standard factory maintenance you have. Yeah. 
No, no, definitely, definitely. I mean, that's one thing that always kind of kind of gets it is 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 not every not, and we know we we know this. My guy, our guys know this. And we all kind of know it. So it's it's one of those things. We know you guys want to drive these cars. You know, like David, his his wife uh, daily drives the car. Uh, some of you guys might daily drive the car, but you still want that power. You want everything. You want it to look good. You want it to perform well. So you still want all that out of it and still be able to drive that car daily. Setting it up correctly, making sure you do a little bit of work, give us a call, get our recommendations and everything out of it is obviously something that we're going to be here for. And our phone lines, like I said, are always active. We've been doing it with Davey for years. Uh, Davey, thank you for coming in today. Thank, thank you for coming in today. I mean, so much. Uh, hopefully you guys learned a lot from just listening to someone that's gone from ground zero virtually, bought the car brand new, to, to building it up to where it's a daily driven 700 horsepower car. I mean, how much more awesome can that be? You know, you get in it and you just drive it. You don't really have to worry about it, right? No, no. I mean, and the few things that have gone wrong is where track days, that sort of thing. As far as daily driving, mm -hmm. uh, it's been extremely reliable and, and, and no, no real issues. Uh, awesome. For that, yeah. Awesome. Well, there you have it, guys. You heard it from him himself, a Camaro owner since 2011, 2011 convertible, gone from factory to where it is today with a nice supercharger under it. And it's been like that for a few years, daily driven. Why not? So you guys can set your car up, get it performing the way you want and still be able to drive it as much as you want. You know, so the, it, it's really kind of endless at that point. You know, as long as you get everything set up, get everything done correctly. Yep, supercharger went on at 20,000 miles and it's about to turn 78,000, so. See, so he's got about 50,000 miles, 50, miles on with the supercharger. Yeah. And it's still a stock motor. Still everything going yep. from there? Yeah, okay. stock bottom end. Stock oh, bottom end, see? Mm -hmm. So the L99s are not bad, guys. They're really not. It's got an LS3 conversion. Oh, okay, okay. LS3 conversion. That's right, we did <laughs> a cam. An LS9 right. cam. There you yeah. go, okay, we did the cam and everything. So that one's been a little bit changed. Um, and so, But other than that, guys, it's pretty set up. All you gotta do is make a couple phone calls, make sure you get the right people, right parts, and everything set up, and you guys can be set up the exact same way. So I wanna, I wanna thank you guys for joining us. Davey, again, thank you for coming yeah. in allowing us to talk about your car. And like we said, we went from ground zero stock car to kind of where it's at now, 700 horsepower daily driver. You know, so how much, how much, what more could you ask, man? I mean, that to me, that's awesome. It's crank horsepower. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but anyways, guys, thanks for joining in. We'll see you guys next week. Um, if you have any questions, comments, uh, give us a call, shoot us an email, shoot us a message. We'll be here for a little while longer. We're going to talk about the Camaro a little bit more. <laughs> so we'll see you guys next week. Thank you.